Hello, welcome to Wrestling in Mom's Basement. This is going to be the retro review for NWO sold out in 1997, the WCW ran pay-per-view. Uh, so Joe, let's get to this uh, thing. Uh, sold out in 1997, took place on January 25th, 1997. I don't know who that, we're almost at the week. The, the 22 year anniversary. Oh. Yep. Uh, location was the Five Seasons Center in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Attendance, a uh, very low. 5,120. For WCW. Because you know, whenever you think of NWO <laughs> and, uh, and them running an event, you automatically think Cedar Rapids. Uh, concerts are official for Teddy Biasi. Uh, this is a very different kind of show. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, as this, as this the first and more or less only official NWO pay per view. And when I say NWO pay per view, I mean full one. Not, not NWO, WCW. Yeah. Whatever. The ring is different. There's a house band and NWO beauty pageant. <laughs> All dubstep versus NWO matches and guy making jokes about dubstep guys on their way to the ring is way out there, but definitely intriguing. So let's get to it. We open with a black and white video of a full police escort bringing people to the arena. It's really hard to see, I think, and we get the old school style NWO promos. You can't see anyone's faces until they get to Arena. Hogan has the Dallas Cowboys with him for some reason. Yeah. The main event here is Hogan versus John for the title, which makes limited sense to me. As he fought Piper at the last paper reel. They're, they always had that weird concept of having a Starcade, then have sold out as a completely different theme of show, and then have Super Brawl to complete the trilogy of S name shows. I think, it, I think this is supposed to be. Giants match from World War Three. Oh, okay, maybe. No one did that Super Bowl. That's the only one person I'm catching in because for some reason the person never cashed in at Starking. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, <laughs> Except for Nash the year after. All right, so Nash is the only one that makes sense. Ah, uh, of the gimmick. Um, the set is completely different looking than most shows. With big lights saying New World War and a bunch of steps. Nick Patrick is the referee for our match tonight. Which. Must Credit be. to him, actually. Yeah, was supposed to be tiring. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Chris, I, I always felt bad for him because for some reason after every match, he had to go backstage, right. too, and then come back yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, Chris Jericho versus Masahiro Chono. Chris is billed as from somewhere north of the border. Chris, I should have played hockey Jericho. It's the same voice I would say the biggest icon in wrestling. In the NBA or NBA, so. the following announcement has been paid for, for by the New World Order. Chono was part of NWO Japan, which became Team 2000 when the angle ended. The don't say you guys get no theme music. Patrick sees Jericho pulling here right off the bat. Jericho's one of the stuff in this one, so this should be a glorified squash for Chono. Yeah. A bunch of those you guys come out to sit in the audience with his, with the ones with the big stars being Arn Anderson and Harm Heat, and a bunch of others. Uh, Eric says that they didn't have to give away tickets to fill the place. And this, this is a shot at... Uh... 1997 Raw Rumble. Uh, considering how bad things got about two or three years, that's just so Uh, nice side wrestle ice speed by Chris as the glorified squash theory, I mean by Chono, that is the glorified squash theory was right so far. Nice plancha by Jericho to the force as Chris is giving it a go lease. And just some someone forward, Chris hurts his knee, then we get some knee work from Chono. And we're kind of boring, but not bad so far. The idiot fans chant USA. For the Canadian. As Jericho has well, to be fair, and I'm not sure if they knew this or not, but Jericho is in fact a dual citizen. Jericho has an enziguri. Bishop Desai jump back leg ground kick. Sounds better than enziguri. <laughs> and they... Uh, hey, anyone that follows Tor McCry knows that. Uh, Dragon Screw dra 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 Leg Whip. Some moves have bold names. It says of the SCF, which doesn't work. Very slow count by Patrick over German by the Canadian. To the Japanese, as the fans shake USA. <laughs> uh, is that joke at all? I can never tell. Uh, they, they botched the noise at the top, which actually killed the crowd pretty badly. Yeah. Chono busts out a table, which is a very different thing here in 1997. By, by the way, did you notice that it actually looked like a New Japan table? It actually did. Like, yeah. like it looked yeah. smaller and skinnier. Yeah. Not like, like a WWF or later on what WCW would use as tables. Yeah, that's true, yeah. And it was just like that long skinny table or that short skinny table that uh, New Japan uses. Yeah, uh, it, it was very uh, 
different, especially in 97, especially the mainstream wrestling. Yeah. Jericho versus Suplex for one, hits the missile drop kick for two. Uh, Lion's Locus 2 and all fear counts, his knee is hurt badly here. He goes over again, but gets caught by the Mafia kick, oddly enough, that doesn't knock him off. So Chona has to shove him for the table. An all Mafia kick in the ring kills Jericho dead for the pain. Um... Uh. I, I did think this match was technically solid. However, there I thought there were parts where it, there wasn't really much interest going on. Uh, either from the crowd or just being just watching it now, I wasn't all that interested in a lot of, a lot of like the like a little bit of stretches in the match. Uh, but overall, I, th I did think it was a solid enough match. Yeah. I don't know why play wasn't as bad as I expected because. I don't know why I would think it would be bad. Uh, uh, you got one of the greatest workers of all time, Jericho, and somebody that's a renowned Japanese legend, so forget about that part. Uh, it was more competitive than I expected. That's probably a better way of saying it. Yeah. Solid stuff here for the most part. Uh, we got a pretty good match, but it was nothing incredible. Yeah, I gave a C minus. Uh, C plus. We get a ton of Miss NWO stuff. Some radio host named Jeffrey Katz is the host. Basic questions are asked. The girls are stupid. Yeah, that sounds a pretty things pretty well. I think. Ah, uh, no, not only were the questions they had were supposed to be like funny sexual, but a lot of those girls did not play into that whatsoever. <laughs> like even to be like, like the, uh, they obviously showed less attractive ones, right? To to get a laugh or whatever. And even like their answers were just like, I would do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. Just, just generic and just pretty much wanted to be there. Yeah. Off their librarian job. <laughs> uh, just dress in leather and sit on a Harley. Uh, Big Bubba versus Hugh Mars. This is Dungeon versus NWO. As Bubba jumps to the dungeon and this is a Mexican. Thing. This is a Mexican death match, despite the lack of Mexicans. <laughs> no intro for Mars. Mars looks like Big Dick Dugley here. <laughs> Uh, the whole kind of does, yeah. the whole deathmatch aspect here is never really explained, but whatever. Mars is the close. I put Bubba on the floor. Bubba finds a chain from somewhere and whips Mars with it. We're told that Mexican deathmatch means anything goes. No. Did you see uh, Jimmy Hart and uh, and Nick Patrick complain that they were using the chain? No. <laughs> like I could have sworn Jimmy Hart said at one point, like, why is he using the chain? <laughs> when it's supposed to be a Mexican deathmatch, pretty much a. A last man standing. Match. Yeah, like I was just gonna say, no life from our hit, and there was no cover because it's like Pat said, more or less life from standing. Ah, uh, every time Pat brings somebody up, they appear on screen. Now here's Jimmy Hart on screen. Yeah, Patrick has as slow as possible. Some more is gonna say after him. Big ball, uh, yeah, ball saying gets back up <laughs> and does nothing but run big sponges and strikes. Mars just places him on a low blow, and Bubba heads out for a walk. We go to the stage where Mars is a moonsault, which was completely mess messed up anyway. So they will be on top of each other. Uh, Bobby grabs a motorcycle and runs down Mars, which she saw, of course. That is it. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't into this match whatsoever. Uh, yeah, I just didn't have any interest in seeing a uh, Mars versus uh, Big Bubba match. Uh, we spoke up Chono, too. So. Yeah. That's amazing. That is true. Uh, uh, it just didn't really do anything for me, and uh, they didn't really do anything of note to stick out in my mind. I kind of just a brawl here with Bubba not doing much at all. Naturally, this had no point. We'll only be on this pay-per-view in this one. Uh, this went nowhere, and the ending was really stupid. At least it was short. Whenever we get to the, whenever we get to that point, that's on good sign. Uh, I gave it an F. I want to be nice and give it a D, because it didn't offend me like some of the matches on this card. Okay. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett versus Mr. Wall Street. Oh, uh, well, it's going to be bad so far. Is it? Uh, Wall Street gets a bad roll to start for two. It's Jarrett argues with Patrick, basically it's a handicap match with the announcers praising the far over the hill of Wall Street. Deborah in the audience likes Jarrett. Jarrett goes into the audience and no one cares. Sleeper goes on as Deborah is trying to get Mongo to do something. Fortnite wrestles in this as we're on like a third or a minute and a half. Eric says the crowd's getting anxious. So that's the end of it. So, in the NWO language, I, anxious means bored out of your mind. I wanted to crack your freaking skull open to end up hating this match. <laughs> this is during the Jarrett wants to be a horse in period, which was which went in Grand Hill of Nowhere. Yes. Anderson is kind of scouting Jarrett at this point, but it's not like he's going to get much here. 
Wall Street is just beyond born by uh, just born beyond belief. Figure four goes on and Patrick literally drags it in a rope so Wall Street can get the break. Wall Street goes to Donald stretches Bond and jumps to Garnerill and drills him with the brute case and threatens to revoke Patrick's park and pass if he doesn't count the pin. Yes, that's for only jokes here because there was nothing there. Uh yeah, this match was it felt longer than it actually was. Uh, it, it it just felt like they were just doing stuff, and uh, the ending was kind of dumb. I'm gonna say because you have an NWF pay per view, you have NWF staff, you have NWO boys in the back, you have NWO people at ringside, you have a biker gang that's being paid for by NWL. So how are you just gonna let someone come across the railing? and alter a match. Much less have your own guy lose. Uh, yeah, this is awful. Rotunda, Wall Street, was just worthless by this point, and Jarrah as a face is just born beyond all. Uh, c comprehension, a horrible match from two solid workers, horrible match. Yeah. F. F. The pageant is still going. It's just the answer questions like you would see in a pageant. But they're biker chicks and not and, and tr not attractive and stupid and Lori, our official's wife. Oh, and but and by the way, why why is this a biker thing? Do you think? Our official. Exactly. <laughs> and now we have a song. <laughs> yeah, the house band does some weird metal band rock song. <laughs> uh, we're only recognizable worlds. Where's our new world order? It's as stupid as it sounds. Uh, but back on versus Scott versus Scott Riggs at uh, Sky Riggs. Uh, Bagwell has recently turned black and white, so this is the blow off, I guess. I don't know about you, but I was begging for that American <laughs> Meal showdown. Uh, Bischoff talks about how Bagwell has the it factor. And it's going to be a big movie star, according to Hogan. That's right. Uh, Buff Chow's is in her Hogan <laughs> and poses, so Riggs jumps into star at us off, and now we. Stole. The concept camera cuts are more recent TNA levels here. <laughs> I, I did like that one camera that was like that selfie stick, like, cam view, vision. But the handheld look Yeah, one. like some of the, like some of the match he gave pretty good angles, I thought. Like, especially the finish of this match. Uh, apparently Buff has a new move for us tonight. He slaps rigs and is on Buff and the four, which isn't DQ here, for no apparent reason. I hate that rule, but love how they constantly change it. Ah! And Eric says, quote, everybody has to go somewhere, horses have glue factories, and people here have connection. If you didn't get that one, that was pretty much an unintentional shot at WWF. And then there's Orlando, I guess so. Or not unintentional, that was an intentional shot at WWF. Amazingly enough, this is a fairly boring match. Uh, Wasn't this like one of the longest matches of the night, too? Yes. Bagwell leaves the fans and Bagwell sucks shit for some reason. Uh, he gets a power on floor two. The match is just rather boring. We did, we did a back shot of Buffalo for Sunset flip a tent. And now let's look at the Blaker checks again. <laughs> sure, why not? Bishop points out that the fans are restless. <laughs> I'm rather surprised. The, this is actually perfect for me to get some rest too. Uh, it was for me to sleep. Riggs reverses a slam into a small package for a little two. The crook referee stick was getting very old at this point. Tornado DT pulls Buff down and Riggs, of course, does a cover. Eric Eric picks New England for the Super Bowl, which was the wrong selection in 1997. Uh, they didn't have Tom Brady yet, so. But if you if you care, 2019 New England's won the Super Bowl. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and and there's some more time. And yes, this is after the uh, AFC and NFC Championship games. And there's some more camera costs and more slow counting. The fans are miserable. Uh, pa Patrick was tired here, and I can't really blame him for that. They get to the corner, Bagwell debuts the blockbuster tag. Yes, it's got 14 minutes. Yeah, my favorite part of the match was one of those, like, small, skinny, long cameras on a pole. Getting a nice shot of Buff actually doing the Buff blockbuster. Mm. I, I, that was actually a really neat shot. However, that that match was about 15 minutes of suck. Yeah, uh, this is incredibly boring and not even a fast pace match. At the end of the day, this is Marcus Bagwell versus Sky Riggs for almost 15 minutes on paper. Yeah? There is no way that works no matter what you say. Uh, F. F plus. Debut of the blockbuster. I know, <laughs> 
He, he does love that move. <laughs> yeah, we did. The girls are stupid. Ah, uh, next. There's the NWA hotline. What's on it? Find out on Night Shrimp. Donald Dallas Page versus Scott Morton. So Page turned down the NWO and became a Mason face in the process. So the ending here is about as obvious as you can ask for. Norton is strong, of course. Page isn't quite his usual self at this point, but it's coming very soon. Page versus Savage will ignite his career and make him a superstar that he will become. He's moving here, which is odd to see. Uh, we still get Norton and Strong. <laughs> they keep they keep talking about taking over Japan, which is a thing like for a while and then never happened, of course. Page pancakes him. Paul Driver, but he slams it forward and said, Panky. Uh, Style Splash. Not that way. His hands are around his waist. Styles clash the hands are hold, and the legs hold back the arms. This is literally just pages on reverse tombstone. There we go. Ah! <laughs> no, he doesn't drop them on his head though. He lifts them up and then fall, falls flat on top of them. It's not the style. It's a styles. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's a styles clash. No, it's not. It's a pancake. It's a pile driver, but he slams them forward. Like a styles clash. <laughs> But not, not the Styles Clash, like a Styles Clash. Yeah, a AJ hooks the guy's leg. Yeah. Hooks the guy's arms around his legs. There you go. And then does it. Then he, you're... DDP just picks him up and then drops him. So it's not the Styles Clash then, it's a pancake. We can argue all day, but we, I, I, I don't want this, I don't want people talking about this show. It's a pancake. Alright, fine, this is DDP with the Styles Clash. Anybody else would be a pancake. Ah, uh, ah! Uh. He's the only one that ever used that move. Fine, but we'll let him slide. Michelle McCool used it too. That was the Styles Clash, by the way. Yeah, that that definitely was. Mandy Rose is the Angel's Wing, too. So that's not much fantastic. Yeah, she does. Yeah, so there you go. Michelle had that move too. Yeah, see. Well, anyway, back to this shitty ass pay per view. Pancake. Pile dryer by just slams him forward and said. But Norton's power takes over again. I never got why he was just be all awesome or something. Norton, not patient. Yeah. Uh, Sting is in the corner building. So the whole match is thrown off course sale. But by the way, it was so far away and it didn't actually look shaped like Sting that it probably actually wasn't Steve Borden. So. Shoulder breaker sends Page to four. He's in trouble. He gets to be up a good build on the force. The PA guy calls Page a loser, which has happened in every match so far tonight. Yeah. All Where they would just randomly interject a match. With yeah. Loser. Yeah. All in order for a while, while Paige punches his way out of it. And his nice top rope clothes on him, too. Paige calls for a diamond color, but here comes a bunch of the weaker NWO guys, led by Bagwell, to offer the spot on the team. Again. He says, just puts his shirt on before dropping Norton, and then an actual smart move from the face. Gets the heck out of there before they kill him. Norton was a cow, I assume, so yeah, he does. By the way, they, they already did that angle with Holland and Nash. <laughs> this time. It's with the NWOB team. They they don't even have the cool damn damn damn. Dam, they have that other theme song. Mm -hmm. The only difference now is you pay twenty seven bucks for it. So yeah. Uh, border match with Page's trying at least. Like I said, his big old push was coming soon to say work is an understatement. Uh, this was obviously just set the angle to end, and the match was pretty bad because of it. Uh, that close on was good though, by Page. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a boring match, F. D. For DDP. Okay. We narrowed down a bit in the pageant. Uh, there's just nothing to say about this. <laughs> Eric Bristol's wife's there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tag titles are outside for Stein Brothers. This was built up forever, including an attempt at vehicle or main store by the heels. <laughs> I mean, there was a video of the two teams in their cars, and the outsiders ran them off the road. The Scott Star Assault, not the Scotch people, Scott, Scott Hall, Scott Sire, <laughs> have a various level of arm work. The camera angles were getting really blank here, though, because it was really hard to tell what we were looking at sometimes. Yeah. And let, so then we start talking about who. Uh, Rick versus Hole Nail, and back to the arm. Rick just salad by pushing on the face again, when all else feels just hit them in the face. Chosen gets Hole out of trouble, and here's Nash. They don't exactly look energetic out there, if that makes sense. Uh, Scott has to spin on the belly now, more arm work. Everyone has had arm work of uh, various times here. This has been half punches, half arm work, and half suplexes. This, this is literally a match. There were cases where both were done at the same time. <laughs> uh, uh, big boot, new move. Puts Rick out to the floor. By the way, the ring collar was very off-putting, too. 
the color of the ring off on or so. Okay. <laughs> it was black and white. Yeah, I know, it was very off putting. I think with everybody's attire in this match, you all black too. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, like this particular match, not one night, but like right here. Uh, this was your usual slow implying the outsiders match, which it's funny to say because they're actually one of my favorite tag teams of all time. <laughs> <laughs> the outsiders? Yeah. But I think, I think I'm, not going to be, I'm not going to favor them <laughs> either, but they are actually one of my favorite tag teams of all time. Yeah. Sort of Cyberpunk, too, so ironically. But, uh, a lot of time wasting. Uh, let's check these stuff out, I guess. And now let's show DBLC because we don't care about the match. Nash vs. Elbow, which takes us down. Uh, Scott rushes out the Rick, but Rick is facing the wrong way. Uh, state, state guys on apron is on the floor now. It's Nash and Rick still. And if you're wondering, Scott Stein drills the other Scott and drops a bunch of F bombs. Good night. This needs to get yellow on right. Yeah. Scott finally comes in <laughs> and beats up everyone that enjoys being outside with these. Everyone goes up. Everyone goes up. And Scott gets the Rangers answer to Scott. <laughs> but there's a referee. Topper Bulldog against Hole. And Randy Anderson comes in and out of the crown and counts the pin. If you're stupid enough to win this last for Nitro, the next night you're a rubber stupid person. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this match was boring until it got to the until it got to the hot tag. Yeah. Uh, they they just weren't really interested in anything, and then Scott Snyder came like a house fire. Uh, uh, the, <laughs> the ending of the match uh, again is pretty stupid, uh, being that it's a WWF w, um, WWF NWO event with NWO people. All in the background, NWO hired security, NWO hired ushers, NWO hired concession people. How was it Randy Anderson able to get into the building? Not, and not only that, climb, climb over the top, guardrail, I, I get it. Manga McMichael's a pretty big dude with a halibur and you don't want to necessarily piss him off. You, can, you could probably let him come across the border, but freaking scrawny ass Randy Anderson... Climbs over the barricade, right in full view of a nature security or NWO security guard with NWO on his shirt, just looking straight at him as Randy Anderson stumbles over the guardrail, slides in the ring, or you know, tells Rick that he'll count the pin, slides in the ring, rolls up his sleeves, one, two, three, and apparently the, the stars were allowed to leave with the... WCW Tag Team Titles and right up the entrance too. So, um, yeah, this that's what the type of ending this pay-per-view has to cause. Uh, she looked a lot better. I mean, she looks good. But she looked a lot better when she curled right here. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, Kimberly, you're talking yes. about? Yes. Pay attention. I mean, she did Crappy look... Crappy-ass sold out. But she did look good there, though. Yeah. But she looks a lot better when she curls right here. Whew. I know a nice girl. Uh... Oh, yeah, uh, just right point again as the outsiders cut the move Not that they cut it, they just weren't. Uh, and it was, it was interesting to see the fight. Uh, not a special hole, I will hear this the drag. It's the longest actually about like 15 minutes almost, and it felt like a lot more than that. Yeah. The screw job man, it doesn't help much either, but not a lot of it's going to help the show at this point. F. D. Actually, I think it would be plus for Scott Star. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, US title, Aguero or six. Uh, remember what I said about nothing being able to help the show? I still think that's correct, but this isn't going to hurt any. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's champion here, but six has to tell itself. Oh, and it's a lot of match. The lack of music for her faces is really weird. Six is, of course, the Jersey's Jewish champion of the world. Bishop calls him a one man rock concert. Oh dear, he's almost Heath Slater. Uh, a jumps, uh, jumps him as the belt is being lifted in the air, and I'll be cheating, right? Well, even I find my jokes boring at this point. Yeah. In this review. Cheating, I I think this might be due to the show just being weak so far. It could just be me. Uh, it's different for sure, but it's just off a note from the ring so far. Great, I can be sending all WCA paper from this hour. Uh, yeah. Big dive from A sends six into the ground at hard, so. Six on the ground hard. Usually a big sign. Nice so far, but that didn't look very bad. Uh, Waltman. Six irritates me for some reason, I mean. Six. Yeah. I hate calling him six. Uh, Waltman. Uh, I've heard two different theories on why he's called six, too. 
One's because he was the sixth member of the NWO, and the other one because of one, two, three. <laughs> I like Waltman. Oh, uh, well. Yeah. Well, I like that's quite what, yeah. Waltman has to swing kick the same room as Crowes at least a week. Turn on stack here. Bronco Buster hits A, but it's just one shot at this point, so it's not as annoying yet. The Bronco Buster. Yeah. A hits a drop kick, and Waltman goes flying. You would think he was catching a camera wall or something like that. He just went flying. Some loud fan shouts a gay slur A. Because why not? A, even Eric has to respond to it. Big suicide died by Waltman, and the crowd was clear and restless. You know, this has been a pretty decent match so far. Well, Grant has basically like six minutes or so by the breath of freaking air to watch Scott Morton and Sky Riggs on pay per view. Uh, Scott Hall made the ladder match awesome. A court on commentary. Did you know that? Uh, Tier I think a large part of that had to do with Shawn Michaels, but I could be just speculating. Tier Tower shot the Waltman's head and A controls pretty easily here. It becomes your standard what wild things can do with a basic piece of hardware match. It was always pretty entertaining, especially with talented guys like A. And pretty good guys like Waltman. Mm -hmm. He's off. He's Waltman was all fair because of the headshot earlier. Now I think. Uh, big old topper of Suplex from A he has Waltman look at, looking a little dead at the moment. Both guys go up, but Waltman does something I've never seen before. He like jump into the air and hit a drop kick, kind of, and then closer to Waller Bischoff called it. Uh, well, it wasn't a drop kick, but Waller, I forget what Bischoff called it, but it was closer to a drop kick. <laughs> uh, it, to a, it did look great though. Waltman of course crashed like a car, driven by a person on Bay eyesight though. Uh, yeah. Or as I put, driven by a penguin. <laughs> the bad eyesight. I'm a different person. I guess I have penguins on my mind. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? Black and white. Uh huh. Uh, Walter can barely move. In that. A cranks up again. Both guys go up. A's. And, and Eric shout. Eric says on commentary, do it for Alice and Cheese. Uh, both guys go up and grab the belt at the same time. A drills him with it and they both fall. But Guerrero holds on to it to get the title back for good this time. Uh, match of the night, it's not even remotely close. Um, uh, th this is sort of the one stipulation you can forgive because it's literally two guys fighting to get the title off the top of the ladder. Yeah. Uh, especially on this one where you don't necessarily, ha where the referee doesn't really necessarily come to an effect. Uh, I also do really like the finish where they're doing a tug of war thing and yeah. at the very end. Where Eddie just ends up with the title and runs through the crowd. Uh, I, I, this match did take a while for me to get going, and that and uh, may, it may not be the best ladder match you'll see, but it is a nice little oasis in this desert of a horrible pay per view. Yeah, uh, match of the night by far. Uh, this was actually good, but these two being able to have some time shelf a bit. This was pretty good, but nothing great. See what happens when you just have two young guys. Out there and get themselves from where they can show off. You get a good match. Uh, give it a B minus. B minus. The pageant begins. Oh. Uh. <laughs> it, it begins now. <laughs> it ends with a fat chick going to make out Eric. I guess two business sales. And her, and her grand prize, you know what it was? A lifetime membership to the Kevin Nash fan club. And those, they've had, those the, are, the chick literally did look like a librarian in a biker outfit. Like that was her Saturday. Like that was her wild Saturday night. She decided to go to an NWO pay per view, dress up as a biker, and then on Monday she's gonna go back into her own normal day of being a librarian. And main event, those two world title: Hollow Hogan versus Giant. Uh, the pyre for Hogan sets his music, which was actually pretty cool looking. Yeah. The Cowboys are with him again here. No. What was weird though with Hogan's entrance was there wasn't no t-shirt on Hogan. That was weird to see. Yeah. For him to rip. Uh, a whole bunch of Cowboys players were named I don't know, so we're just going to skip that. Yeah, I'm more the football guy out of the two, and I've never heard of any of those guys. Did you want me to name the three of them? No. Okay, so big Cowboy fans, only one of those names, only any of those things for me to think. Hogan's tiny looking here, too, which was very weird to say. Yeah. I don't mean because he's against Giant. I mean, his muscle mass is way down here. Yeah, uh, yeah. Plus, it's just take Giant off. This is happening because Giant won World War III. Pat, sorry. Uh, Hogan said no title shot up. Apparently, everybody took a Giant off. He was the first lead team after being in it for like three or four months. And Hogan stole. So he brings out offensive punches before shifting slightly to harder punches. And going full going full whole iron on the world hard punches. Why does every move have to be heard around the war world? According to Bishop. Ah! <gasps> uh, Double clothesline, both guys are down already. 
Johnny takes over, Hogan over acts, that's always worse, he never acted as old, he never acted as old as an actor. But as a wrestler, he acts far too much. Ah, uh, solar block is nothing for Hogan. Hogan actually tried solar package, you see something there every day, I guess. It looked cool too, as Johnny just kind of held him there when he was trying to roll through with it. I love, I love basic counts like that, wish, gets to show someone's power and size. And there's some very basic and weak looking heel stuff from Hogan. Johnny goes off top or top of elbow, which misses, of course, as it would have hit Hogan so far that, that the hair of inside Hogan's skull would have popped out. <laughs> and his image would have been ruined. Uh, it was a pull off bandana company, it's out of business. And Johnny no sells a big boot. That he, was he may he may still be keeping bandana companies just going. Yeah, no, I, the way Johnny sold a big boot was pretty cool though. A weak slam, but still slam nonetheless. Yeah. So, so the late drop was just completely no sold. Hogan parades around, doesn't want to, doesn't seem to notice the lack of giant lane here. Uh, choke slam kills Hogan dead, but Patrick keeps saying that the shoulder was up, even though he doesn't move. The run ins begin, of course, and giant piles them up, just like a horror. Then it now sits in the ring too until Hogan gets a real guitar as Hole and Nash get there. Good to see Hogan grow a giant with the instrument. Like a real guitar. Good to see Hogan grow a giant with the instrument of the outsiders. So I had to do one, two things in one night. Uh, uh, the phase one sting, which does nothing. Spray paint jobs end this, and the match was just for now, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's about as interesting as you would expect it to be. Uh, a, a giant Hogan match in 1997. Uh, it was literally just Hogan doing the basic stuff here, uh, and Giant ne not necessarily being as good as he would be. Uh, this is a usual board match that I had nothing, no four fun to me, even the house show with the shoulder not being up thing. But it's better than the fake shoulder injury concept, I guess. And I'm all board match to have before a board show, though. The copyright says NWO, which was a nice little tall show. Uh, for me, the match was an F. D minus. Earl. Uh, overall, yeah, if you haven't been paying attention, it's an F. Uh, man, you can run on this show, and I'm, I'm probably going to. Uh, this show literally doesn't make any sense to me. If it's a heel faction, and they start a heel show, where they have their matches, and they're going to, I guess, run over their contenders. They can literally do that. They have their own referee, which is kind of stupid that they only had one, because why don't you have, like, I don't know, three or four. Uh, literally, WCW could have handled that by putting one of, another referee under a mask or some shit like that. Uh, but they have their own referee. They have their own security. They have their own... They, they have their own police force. They drove them into the building. Mm -hmm. uh, they had the Dallas Cowboys. They had their security with w NWO shirts on. Kayfabe-wise, the show doesn't make any sense. Because literally, it should have been an NWO beatdown 